What's up guys, Dark Dally here, and today I'm at my no-nonsense fort over at Starlight Drive-In. A couple things I want to show that I think are really cool. I want to go over the alarm system that I have set up here, and I will do that. First, I kind of wanted to show the settlement because I didn't really do that in the last video. Now, I have all these spike barricades. And one viewer commented, said he liked them and wanted to know where they were in the menu. And I like them too. And the reason I have them and I have so many everywhere, again, you know, this settlement is about no nonsense. It's about, you know, whatever, you know, whether or not it looks pretty, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, whatever's functional. And so these are simply to keep attacking enemies from taking cover. Like here, this is so they can't use this barrier for cover. I like this little barrier here. It was part of the original military look, and I like it. And then I have them along the wall, simply to keep attackers from getting too close to the wall where I would lose line of sight on them. Notice I have this tower up here, which is still unfinished, and it's a four-story elevator that I snapped in over there, and it can pretty much see everything. You know, not like right here, but, you know, that's what that place is for, and I'm going to show that. Anyway, so, you know, long story short, these spike barricades are basically to keep enemies from getting too close to the wall. Now, I haven't been attacked here yet, so I can't say if these walls are high enough to protect against thrown projectiles. But I really wanted something that was open. I know that I said no nonsense, but I really wanted something that was open. I wanted a different feel than my black fortress. And here's my back gate, and I will show that when I go into the alarm system. Then, uh, yeah, I found a Brahmin wandering around here. So I put the Brahmin trough. I was like, where should I put a Brahmin trough? Because, you know, if you don't put the Brahmin trough thing down, they're just going to roam everywhere. So, you know, you put that down so you can anchor them in one spot. But as we know, they love to stand inside buildings and glitch and, you know, sit there and... Mur, 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 mur. So I figured I'd put it here. The only thing on the other side of that wall is the generator shed. So there's really nothing annoying he can get into. So he stays out here. So this is the outside. It is completely walled in. And I wanted to keep it kind of small because, you know, having a wall around the perimeter of your settlement eats up so much of your settlement size allowance. You know, and I don't like to go over that too much because I don't like getting into frame rate issues. Hi. This, this wall here is from Unlock Settlement Objects. It's the tall wall. This I'm going to show in the next video I'm going to show how I built this this was actually kind of cool it, it was actually kind of hard to do you know as much as this looks like just the piles of junk sometimes it's hard to arrange piles of junk the way you want to get it and so there's not much more to show on the outside it's just all completely walled in but yeah I wanted an open air look and I wanted to have and I, I will have I'll have like a little market here which I have kind of started on Nothing fancy, I just plopped down a general store. You know, it raises happiness, of course, you know, and I like my settlers to be happy. Something I want to say in here is about these planters. I put these planters, they're from Unlock Settlement Objects, and I use them instead of the regular crops because I thought they looked cool, they take up less space, you know, I, I didn't, I've never used them before. Well, as it turns out, when you place these and assign settlers to them, they don't actually farm them, they just kind of stand around. So, you know, if you haven't used these, be forewarned that if you place them, the settlers won't use them. They'll just stand everywhere, idle, yeah, and do that. They keep walking up to you and saying random crap. It's not a good way to keep your settlers busy, if that's what you like. Now, you know, there's other ways to keep your settlers busy, you know, idle animation mats and what have you. But, of course, these guys are assigned to the crops, so I assume I can't assign them to something else, obviously, so... There's that. I may end up replacing these with actual, uh, you know, the planters, the big square ones. So let's move on to my alarm system. Like the Black Fortress, actually the Black Fortress the Sanctuary has the same system, I just haven't showed it on video yet. It's, this has a central lockdown switch, which shuts that door. Now this is why there's all the wiring, because the power has to go to this switch, and then it has to go back across the settlement to all the places that I want to lock down. That switch locks down this back gate. It locks down 
this generator shed just in case you know anyone gets in the perimeter they can't get to my generator and it locks down the front door and that's as simple as putting a switch and just running the wires all over the settlement to the you know to the places that you want to lock down now in addition the doors also have their own switch so I could lock them down separately and that's just a matter of putting the switch in line to the door notice it has no power now because the main switch is off but that allows me to shut just the back gate without locking down the entire settlement you know if for whatever reason I want to I can just shut down this one gate the alarm system I installed in the circuit before the lockdown switch I hope this settler isn't annoying you guys because he's annoying me so I'm, I'm hoping that my voice comes out over him the the alarm system is set in line before the switch and what it is it's a simple XOR gate the reason it's an XOR gate is because okay the XOR gate is the one that is active if it has exactly one source of power so here's how it works here's the lockdown switch then I have an XOR gate this wire goes directly to power which means this switch has power right this wire goes to my raid siren right here which is currently off because this is off and obviously my generator is on this switch is receiving one power which keeps everything open when I turn it off of course that shuts everything down now when the raid siren comes on that puts two power through the XOR logic gate which shuts it off and shuts the switch off so what this means is that if a raid siren goes off and settlers will if you put put it in a place where they can get to easily like for instance right here out in the open if the settlement becomes under attack the settlers will hit the switch so what that means is if I can't make it to my lockdown switch the settlers hitting the raid alarm will trip the XOR gate and again put this before the switch that way you don't have any weird conflicts it puts it before the switch if they hit that raid siren it simply cuts off power to the switch which effectively turns it off and then my settlement is on lockdown until I turn this siren back off I hope you followed that and that all makes sense I thought about going to a dedicated area and building a simplified version of the circuit but I don't think I have to I think I explained it well enough so you know let me know what you think and I'm sure I'm not the first person to come up with this it's a pretty simple concept I'm sure a lot of people are using a similar system it's great so that you can lock down your settlement and if you can't get to it for whatever reason the settlers tripping the switch will lock it down for you so I hope you guys like that I've had a lot of fun building here so that's it for this in the next video, I'm going to show how I did some of this creative junk architecture. I hope you guys like that too. Alright guys, it's been a pleasure. My name is Dark Dally. Don't forget to subscribe for more content. I will catch you all next time.